is Unexpected with Hannah Love. In this podcast, you will gain a new perspective of how God loves you enough to call you to things that you couldn't have imagined for yourself. Hello, everybody. I'm super excited to be sitting across from an absolute gem today. I love her as a friend. She is somebody who has been not only a champion of me, but someone who challenges me. We met a few years ago. She is just, man, you're just something. This is Lauren Tomlin sitting across from me. Um, She is a mama of three beautiful girls. She is active in philanthropy. She has a heart for others, literally for others. You should look it up. We'll put a clip in here later. We'll talk about it. And she is married to Chris Tomlin. You may or may not know his music an incredible, probably multi, what, Grammy award-winning artist? Grammy, yes. Grammy, yes. Yes. Okay, just making sure here. (laughs) I I live kind of out of that world, even though I'm married to, you know, that world. So Hey, it's hard to keep track with everything, right? Yes, it is. Well, Lauren, welcome. Thank you for coming on today. I'm so glad I get to see you because I haven't seen you all summer. I know. You haven't seen me now. I've got a, a little bump going on. We've got lots to catch up on. A lot. And everybody gets to hear it here. I thought I would tell everyone first um, how unexpectedly we met the first time I ever met you. You were in my home. And I I had never met you before. I was like 11 days away from having Ames. I was very pregnant. And, and I was like, was why event. is she hosting 40 women at her house? Yeah, I, it was an event and I had never met you. Um, I just offered up my house because I was like, this is the least I can do. Right. 11 days before delivery. Yes. Which I can't even fathom. And that is where we met. I know. So. And the rest is history. The rest is history. And now I see you every other Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about you start with a little bit of your story Maybe I don't you start where you want to start, but I love to ask people about their unexpected in their life. And then something else I thought that we would touch on because you have been such a huge part of this in my life is healing and working on that healing work. And since I just did an episode on healing, I thought that you would be my guru to go to so we can talk through some of the things that I didn't get to tease out in that episode because you are kind of my girl for that. Well, I'm so happy that we can talk about that. Yeah. Because we, I mean, we're all about that. We've got a fun group that meets every other week, Wednesdays. And so it's so much fun to kind of stay up on the up and up in life and really celebrate everyone's healing. Right. You know, of how yeah. God's moving unexpectedly. Yes. Right. Well, and that's that's what I said. You're a challenger because you will pull that out even if we don't want to touch on the, the hard stuff. Yeah, nobody ever does, right? No. It's never that easy to see it. I know, but you're good at it. Well, that is kind of my unexpected in a lot of ways to uh, pivot to that. I would have never thought in a million years that this would be something that I'm so passionate about and something that it's brought so much life to me. Mm -hmm. I was very much marketing major. I worked at Chick-fil-A in their corporate office in Atlanta and kind of saw my life going in that direction. I, I wanted a certain lifestyle. I wanted a certain building that was in Atlanta. I would always see it, and that was the goal. And it was funny because in the course of being in my dream job, just, I was in my twenties and just slowly I was losing heart and it came to my awareness that I had pretty much been in a place of just striving to the next goal, whether that was in college and then you're moving into your single life and your career. And I had really come at a point where God was calling me to deeper waters. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because so much of that was him calling me into ministry which was the thing that I vowed I would never, ever do because mm-hmm. I was a pastor's kid. So it's funny how the things that we say, oh, I'll never. is what he yeah. asked us to come to. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, I think there's so much opposition against the things that we were made for. Right. And mm-hmm. so they become the things that we say, oh, I'll never do that because there's things that come against us to rob us of the very thing that God has for us. That's right. It's funny you say that. My mom said growing up my whole life that I should be a teacher, that I would be a teacher. And because she was a teacher and she just saw that heart in me. Right. And I said, no, I'm not going to be a teacher. Not I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to do that. I don't know why. And now here I am and I'm like, 
There's so Isn't much, that so much that circle. I do is teaching. It's not necessarily to a classroom of kids, but I'm like, well, yes. Didn't that come back to me? <laughs> I know, right? And it, I, I see that so often in people's lives. So very much, this was the unexpected to be so passionate about what God can do and how he can work and how he can move. And really all of this came from things just not going the way that I wanted in life. Like I came to a crossroads where, again, it was in the career and it was, I was still single in my mid twenties. All of my friends got married straight out of college. Again, this was a while ago. So now I know now people make it to their thirties easily, but I was kind of blazing my own trail. Mm -hmm. Unlike everyone else who had kids, they were married, they were doing the thing. And so God was using life circumstances to bring me to the end of myself to kind of raise up what we're going to be talking now. And so it was interesting because so much of what I've learned has actually come from a retreat-based ministry that my parents have. Mm -hmm. And it was something in their story where my dad was a pastor and very much taught the message, now go do this kind of thing. Here's the scripture, go do it. But it came to a point in their marriage where at 20 years in, my mom said, if things don't change, I'm gone, Mm -hmm. basically. And so in his pursuit of healing, he found a book, Wild at Heart, and it presented just this whole, by John Eldridge, a whole new approach of relating to God, hearing from him, and finding healing in your wounds. And so when he started doing that in his own heart and life, things started changing in our family. He came to me and said, I want you to find healing on how I've wounded you. And so I was like, oh, we're fine. Yes. Everything's yeah. fine. So yes. Would you yeah. say that this is the reason initially you were not interested in ministry work? Because oh, this was the past that you saw. This was yes. what you had seen to this point. Well, and it wasn't so much my father... My wound with my dad was his temper. Mm -hmm. Now, my issue with ministry was more about our experience of what I experienced as a pastor's kid, because we planted a church, packed up, put all of our belongings in a U-Haul, and it was that story. Right. So my perception of God was scarcity because of what I saw with how my parents navigated it and handled that. Does that make sense? Yes. But the byproduct of all that stress was my dad's temper. And so when he came to me and said, you know, I want you to find healing, it was this nebulous thing, right? As many of you might feel even listening now, it's like, you know, you might be at a crossroads or you know you might be stuck, but like, how does this work, right? It's too big to even, yeah. like, where do you even start? Exactly. And so I just kept saying, oh, we're fine. You know, you've found healing. You're a new man. Like, it's changed. You're, it's different. We're good. Well. As life continued to go on, then I started realizing like, oh, yeah, I'm not really fulfilled. And there are deeper longings. And so I found myself on, at that point, he had resigned from the church to start his own retreat ministry. And so he presented almost this whole path that he had found his healing in. And my mom, together, they had this retreat. And it was a huge crossroads where I really sensed there were two doors. And God's like, you can either stay on this one path or you can open up the other door and let me surprise you. And I am so glad I did because it does take courage to go to those unvisited places. Mm -hmm. But in it, you find your true self and you find the life that you were made to live. That's right. Right. I, I think everyone that I have talked to on this podcast, there has come a point where there's a choice or there's a pivotal moment And I think that that's funny because I think everyone has one. It's universal. And again, I think it points to the unexpected because there's the path that you thought you wanted or the path that you have pursued and haven't found fulfillment in. And then there's the other door, which you feel the call of God, but you don't have any idea what that's going to look like. It's terrifying. It's scary. Unexpected. Oh, totally. You don't. You don't know what that's going to look like, but it's also the alternative to a continued life of what? I mean, unfulfilled resignation. And I think a lot of what you talked about can be striving, but even in your last podcast, just you sharing your story of how we can cope. So a Mm -hmm. lot of times when we're unfulfilled, we go to those mechanisms. Yeah. Those other places define life apart from God, really. Mm -hmm. And we settle. 
We can easily resign and just settle with whatever. And that can, you know, for you, what did that look like? For me, yeah, I mean, it was numbing. It was, I, I guess they call it like bottling or I don't, I just turned it off. I just turned everything totally off. And did it work? To a point. And right. I feel like that's coping for everyone. You right. Know? Right. So for some, it's shopping. For some, it's performing. Like they're the get it done girl, guy, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're getting it done. You know, we can go to so many other places to find life and God's saying, that's not really who I made yeah. you to be. Like that isn't actually who you really are that's and right. how I see you. And the fruit of that is just so sour. I mean, that's when you start coming home at night going, what am I doing? Yeah. I mean, it's not that you're necessarily doing anything wrong. Like, well, I mean, over shopping maybe, but it's not like I was abusing substances or you know, partying or doing any of these things, but I was not acknowledging hurt and Mm -hmm. really feelings of any kind, which then affected the future that God had for me. Because if I'm not going to acknowledge these feelings, then how am I going to fully receive what he has for me and like the life of family and motherhood and And the one thing that I love that you're saying is that when you shut off in one area, it affects all areas. Right. So if you can't compartmentalize turning it off. Right. So if that happens in your own life, then it affects you and Shay. It affects you with your kids. It affects dreaming. Yes. So that's the thing that's so huge about what we're going to be talking about is these places that we can shut down or resign actually can pervade everything. Right. I mean, for, for me personally, that looked like if I shut off because I was hurt or didn't want to feel certain things, then that meant I would do my own thing, which was pretty much how it felt anyway, because I was home with children. Mm -hmm. Shay would be touring and it would be like me living my life and him living his life. Mm -hmm. And that was just it. And that's not, we're not just meant to coexist in a marriage, right? right? That's not God's design for us. Right. But that was that was what happened when I turned off the feelings. Yeah. And I think you raised another great point is a lot of times we are stuck in believing certain things. It works mm-hmm. for a while and it serves us yeah. for a while. And then it comes to that point where it's not working anymore. Right. And whether you have circumstances that expose it, whether an affair It can be, you know, for example, my blow up in the fall that I had this past one where at 40 something, I realized I tell Chris and, you know, I shared this in our small group, but it was crazy to come to a point where you realize, oh my gosh, I've built a house of cards. Like, you know, a lot of what has driven me is so much of, I have to be strong to be loved. So that is the lie. That is the lie. And we'll, we'll get into more of that, but a specific sentence that we live under. It's an I statement because it comes after our identity. And so again, I had never realized, you know, I had done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So this one blindsided me, right? Because it looked good, kind of like to what you're saying when you're manning the kids at home and Shay's out on the road. You're doing a good thing. Right, right. But what had happened was, is I had gotten to the point where God allows and he allowed in my life circumstances Back to back, a surprise pregnancy, health issues for myself in the pregnancy, then health issues with L. So he kept moving the finish line for me. And I kept thinking, oh, like once I get to this next point, we'll be fine. Right. Or once we get and then there would be another setback. And it was two years of solid setbacks because clearly I was slow to wake up to this conclusion that he wanted me to wake up to. Yeah. And so it finally came to the point when I got COVID, we were doing a remodel on our house following this pregnancy, which is dumb and stupid, but we were doing that and we were supposed to move into the house and I got COVID two days before the move in. So this is after two years of literally survival mode. Okay. And it was like the wheels fell off the bus because Chris had to move us in entirely while I was completely bedridden, you know, dying on the vine, as you know how it can be. And when I got back to the house, there was something small, and then it always is, right? Right. And with me, him and I, and I went Richter. I mean, when there's like a seismic blow, it was massive. And it really wasn't about that small little thing. Sure. The accumulation of what God was after exposing within me. And so it was, 
I have to be strong to be loved had driven me all these 40 something years. And God was saying, really, is it really working for you? Because in that house of cards, if I'm always strong, then I'm independent. I'm self-reliant. So like Chris told me, he said, I would love to help you, but you won't let me. You don't need me. Yeah. And people have to work around you, Lauren, to help you. So that was some hard truth to hear, right? And so in all of this, though, I realized how much I had set the tone and created this house of cards. And I looked at him and he was petrified. I said, I have built a bunch of BS. And I said, things are never going to look the same after this. Now, there's moments when you have meltdowns, but then there's some where literally I can see how people can run off, you know, run to substance abuse or have an affair, or they literally create a whole different lifestyle because they don't know that there's another way. Right. And so in that moment, I knew like, oh my gosh, God, the only way out of this is with you. You're going to have to show me this new way because honestly, I don't know any other way than this way. And it was as a result of that little pastor's kid taking us back to that wound, that place where the stress was so high with my parents that my approach to making life well was to be strong, Mm -hmm. to be loved. And so literally this unwinding was with me and God, but it ended up shifting conversations with Chris. So it required some more of him stepping up. And it required more of me expressing need. I hated that word. Oh, me too. Right. So we're similar in a lot of ways in this, right? Yeah. And so all of this, you know, healing didn't happen overnight, but it was the start. Right. Those moments where you come to the end are my, I called home and this is the best. I was just bawling. And I, my dad's like, congratulations. This is the (laughs) best day of your life because see, he came to that moment. And my mom came to their moment. And there has to be those ending moments when it feels like all is ending, yes. when actually that's the beginning. And God's like, okay, finally, we can now work now. Work. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. So as a mom, I feel like I'm in a constant state of problem solving. It can even become overwhelming when you get so stuck in problems that you can't seem to get a solution. If you've ever been there, I may have just the thing for you. Better help. Y'all know I'm a proponent of therapy, and one of the main reasons is that a therapist can help equip you with tools for processing and problem solving. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, Better Help is a great option. You can even get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Unexpected today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Unexpected. Get ready for Life Mark, the new movie from Kendrick Brothers and Kirk Cameron, opening in theaters everywhere September 9th. In Life Mark, David's comfortable world is turned upside down when his birth mother unexpectedly reaches out to him, longing to meet the 18-year-old son that she's only held once. With the encouragement of his adoptive parents, David embarks on a life-altering journey of discovery that leads to a staggering truth from his past. Can one decision, one choice, impact so much more than one life? Inspired by an incredible true story, Life Mark celebrates adoption, reconciliation, and love. If you're looking for a movie that will restore your hope, make your plans now to see Life Mark. See Life Mark in theaters nationwide beginning September 9th. Learn more about Life Mark and get your tickets today at lifemarkmovie.com. That's lifemarkmovie.com. Thank you for being so vulnerable because I know I know a part of the story. And in fact, I think the next time I make an appearance in your life is when I messaged you kind of right before all this hit the fan. Oh, 100. So I delivered Elle and then was struggling because she had a lot of health issues feeding. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. Yes. Newsflash. And you messaged me that you sensed, you heard, and I have like hardly knew you. Literally, we had met once, maybe twice. And this goes back to me saying that I had started my journey to say, God, I'm listening. I will obey 
I want to hear you. I want to see you. And so God started dropping people in my Out of heart. The and he was, I mean, he told me you. And I was like, she's going to think I'm a lunatic. I don't know her. And I literally messaged you. And I said, God told me to pray this over you. And this is what I'm praying over you and your family. And you were just yeah. like, and that was away. the beginning. Yeah. And, and I was, it was like, it's it's going to go one way or the other. She's going to think I'm absolutely crazy or it's going to meet her where she needs it because God asked me to do this. Oh, it was everything I needed in that moment. So again, that's just a little plug for obedience, everybody. If you're asking to hear from God and saying yes, that launched. Us. And the power in hearing from God. That's right. Of when you took that risk. It was risky. It was very <laughs> risky. And it was actually the very thing I needed. I yes. was very alone. And the cards falling. I didn't realize how much it was falling in that moment, but it was. That's right. So God is good and he works in the unexpected. So, well, and that's what I love, you know, speaking of unexpected. And I, I want, you know, when we're talking about healing, there's so many ways to find healing. That's right. You know, like counseling's an avenue that's so important. Forgiveness, believe it or not, unforgiveness is a massive block yes. to healing. Yes. So that's a huge, huge part. But what I love is, is that God is in the healing business. You know, one of the most incredible stories in the New Testament is, and I wanted to share this because this is kind of the banner before where we're heading in healing. Because let's just think about this, like how much people are pursuing healing or they're wanting transformation. Right. And yet it's free with Jesus. He's always available. He wants to meet us at any moment, and it's why he came. And this is an incredible moment because it's in Luke chapter 4, 16. And he basically, he went to Nazareth, and I'm going to read the scripture, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. So imagine this moment. He steps up for the first time at the synagogue, and this is his proclamation of This is why I've come. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. I mean, like, can you imagine, like, they're probably, like, you couldn't hear a pin drop because everybody had been waiting. Who is the Messiah? Who is this person who's coming? And he stands up and reads and says, this is me. And so this was his proclamation. He didn't say salvation. He didn't name that literally. Free the captives. It's all about healing. Yeah. Yes. So much of it is. And, and yes, he did come for our salvation, but it's interesting. Of course, that's the ultimate, but it's interesting when he said, this is why I've come. It's healing. Yeah. It's freedom. And so much of that, probably a lot of the Bible can be taken literally, but so much of this is spiritually, you know, that giving eyes to see. That's not just healing blind people. Right. Right. That's giving us sight yes. to see ourselves as God sees us, to see the places that he needs to work in us to give us that healing. Yes. Like it's all encompassed if you go back and read it physically and spiritually. Yes. And it's in tandem with them in relationship. That's right. Through the Holy Spirit. And it's free. So like for those of us that were strapped on a budget, like where we're about to head, you can do any time with him and it's of no cost to you. It just takes risk. Right. Right. Yeah. And sometimes that's a hard place to be. I mean, in my episode on healing, I kind of go into a little bit how that hit me in the face when I was told you have chronic trauma, right? So I was like, what? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> that's somebody else. That's not, I'm fine. Yeah, I don't want to look at that. We're I'm good. Absolutely fine. For me, it took someone else outside of me and outside of my own life to point me there. And, and again, counseling and therapists are awesome, and that's what they're there for. But if they're not pointing you towards biblical principles, that is where the healing really begins. And so I'm going to I'm going to toss this to you because I know that this point is so important and I I started on it in my episode on healing and it was about identifying that you need healing. Like identifying that you 
have hurts, you have wounds, and that there is healing to be done. But but what is that? That is not that is not the answer. Just identification right. is not the answer to your healing. And I'm going to pitch yes. it to you now because you're like again my guru here. Well, so a lot of times it's easy to name what has happened in our story, and and awareness is massive. Mm-hmm. Like it is huge. Connecting the dots is huge. But what I have found in my own life is that I can name something, but until I bring that and surrender that to God for him to come in, that's when the healing happens, when he brings his perspective right. to replace whatever that lie. Mm-hmm. So when I talk about lies, it's it's false beliefs that we come into agreement with from the enemy. Right. So it is something we come under, we give him permission. And when we make that agreement, so the enemy doesn't have authority over our life. But when we come under agreement and it's almost like a handshake, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm not chosen. And like you said, it's an I statement. Yes. Or you're right. I'm not enough. Or you're right. You know, when you first hear that, your life is pointless. Oh, you're right. I'm not alone. When we agree, then that starts to create more and more of a stronghold. Over time, it can get deeper and deeper. And then what happens is more and more things happen in our life. And to then, reinforce that. hundred percent. So what started out as like a, a teeny creek becomes this channel. The this, Grand Canyon. Yes. Deep, deep. And that's how you see people. You know, how many people do you want to be like that are over 65? Yeah. How many? I mean, that's sad. Right. The, like you could count on maybe your hand. And I think a lot of that is the hurts, I mean, the setbacks of life, the wounds that come, and people don't know the way to find healing, to find freedom, to find life. And so, you know, what is huge, and let me give this passage, there is a way to find healing, to break these agreements and invite God in to hear his truth. So this passage I've always stood on whenever I've done this in my own life because it's very clear and it's easy to follow. And so it's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. It says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Okay? So, whoa, we have divine power. Mm -hmm. We have it to, to demolish these strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So that's that's the kicker right there. Right. So when it comes to healing, it's, you know, identifying it as one thing, but it's bringing it to God. Okay, God. Inviting him into yes, that. What is your perspective? How do you see me? What is your truth? And so before we ever even get to that point, once you're able to name the I statement, whether it's, I'm not enough, I'm worthless, I'm alone. The important part is then to take authority over that lie. So we we have the authority because we are co-heirs to Jesus Christ. He died for us and we therefore have the authority. I forget which verse it is, but everything that he has or has authority to do and has done, we will do and even more, it says in the Bible. Exactly. And it's because of what was accomplished on the cross in his resurrection and ascension, because he says, I was seated at the right hand of the Father. Right. So literally, that is where we reign, like you said, co-heirs with him. So we have the authority to take those lies to Jesus. So it's, it's as simple as this. You just literally, in the name of Jesus, I reject that lie. So once you name it, once you get to that point of, okay, what do I hear when I walk by the mirror? When I see myself in the mirror, what do I hear? That's a question. What do you hear when you blow it, when you let people down? That's an easy doorway. Or if you overreact out of proportion to an event and you find yourself like, what was that about? Like, again, me going Richter on Chris. I mean, he literally was like, oh, my gosh, do I need to pack a bag? I mean, it was like (laughs) so seismic, but it was really more about that core belief. Yeah. That was way down in there and I had no clue, right? And so if you can back end it from there and say, okay, what was that about? What like why how did I feel in that moment? Did I feel like I didn't matter? No, that's not it. It's like right. 
And this is the sticky part that people don't like because that's going back to the source or going back to the wound or going back to the pain. Right. And that's what mostly I think what we see in today's culture is people escaping, right, or coping to not think about those pain points. It's the very thing that that God asks you to do is to go back there. Right. And identify the lie. And you raise a great point. What we do to cope is to create a life that will make sure we never feel that pain again. Right. So see, I felt pain as that little fourth grader. So, whoa, we will not be weak. We will be strong. And so I create this whole life and it looks really great. And everyone applauds and it's people rely on me and room mother this and, you know, capable and Lauren, you're so strong. But in reality, it was a house of cards and right. God, God knew we need to bring this to an end right. so that you may find healing. Yeah. So I reject that lie. That's what I did in that story. I took a walk and I called home and my mom really walked me through this. I mean, here they are doing this on their retreats and I'm calling and I know how to do this for myself, but sometimes it does help, like you said, to have right. someone with you. I mean, you've walked me through these. Right. We need We need people in our life, but you can also do this yourself. Right. So in that moment, I did call and uh, I renounced that lie. And then here's the beautiful part of asking God to speak to that place, to bring his perspective, his truth, how he sees things. And, you know, in John 10, he talks about, I'm the good shepherd. My sheep know me. They hear my voice when I call them. And he says four times that we are to hear his voice. So he must know this is something that's really hard for us to gather or stand on like, really? Like, but if you only knew what I've done in my story or, well, he would speak to Hannah like that, but he won't speak to me. No, he wants to speak to everyone. everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is where the money is. I mean, this is the jackpot. This is, if you could build a muscle in life for anything, it's this. It's this. Because intimacy with God is a life. relationship. Well, it is life giving. It's everything. Yeah. It's the source beyond knowledge. And knowledge, yes, serves us to right. know God about God, but to know him in intimacy. That's right. Game changer. And so literally, as you hear the truth, here's what's crazy. The more you go to him to hear it, the more we start to believe it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God, tell me how you see me. What is the truth to replace that lie? So he did bring me a picture I'm not going to share because it was it was actually breathtakingly beautiful. It was intimate and and special. There's right. some things that I share, yes. and but it it meant a lot to me what he spoke. I'll never forget it. But I believe in that that's the healing. Right. Not only his picture of what he brings or the word. It could be scripture. It could be a song. It could be a memory. I mean, he can speak in a myriad of ways. But as we start to hear it, okay, God, I'm going to. I'm going to choose in faith to believe this. Mm -hmm. This might be hard to believe because it's almost too good to be true. But I'm going to stand in this and I'm going to keep asking that you keep bringing this truth to me. Yes. And, and it will. Yes. And the more you own it and believe it, the more you actually become that person. Thank you so much for listening today. If this episode has encouraged you, please feel free to share it with your family and friends. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world today, and my hope is that this show is a candle in the dark.